Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Well, Intel have done it. They've revealed their plans to enter the high-performance GPU market finally. After a ton of teases from Raja Kodori and others on Twitter, and of course the whole Odyssey event thing, along with other teases from the company, we now actually have a solid understanding as to their plans for the future. Now, while we do have a lot of information here, and I'll go over it in just a moment, there are a number of questions that we're still left with. For example, final performance targets. But I'm going to get into some speculation as well as some exclusive information that's kind of passed to me under the table towards the end of this video. But first, let's focus on what Intel have revealed here. So critically, Arc encompasses several architectures. So the first architecture that we're going to see from Intel <laughs> I have to say, I absolutely love these code names. They're brilliant. They're, they're tops. The first architecture is going to be Alchemist, and this is what used to be referred to as DG2. So now, if you hear DG2, you can just replace that in your mind, you know, find replace with Alchemist. After I swear to God, I love these names so much. After that, there is Battle Mage. Celestial, and finally Druid. I can't help but feel that the Druid one isn't quite as good as like Battle Mage or Celestial. Like, why would you follow up bloody Celestial with Druid? It, uh, I, okay, uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Let's move on. So obviously these architectures are gonna follow one after the other, but we don't know if there's going to be a major gap. For example, is Battle Mage going to be very similar to a previous architecture? Is it just going to be a higher performance variant or whatever? Intel, at the moment anyway, are not providing those details. What they have said though, and I think what they're about, what I'm about to reveal here is quite telling, is that these things are no joke in terms of feature set. So Raja has previously hinted by showing a 3D Mark run that the uh, XE architecture could in fact run um, ray tracing. And it's not really surprising given the release date, which is early 2022. We'll get more into that in just a second. Um, but it's nice to see it confirmed here officially by Intel. So yes, ray tracing is available, variable rate shading, mesh shaders, in fact, all DirectX 12 ultimate features are officially supported with their architecture. Now this, this is the tasty part. This is like, you know, this is like the sirloin steak of all of this. Um, kind of recently I covered the fact that there was a really important hire from uh, Intel of a former NVIDIA, although recently they've been working at other locations, I believe it was Facebook, and this individual had been key to do several things at NVIDIA. One was denoising algorithms of ray tracing, and also he was quite instrumental in the advancement of their DLSS solution. Ha <laughs> ha! Guess what I'm about to tell you guys. Yeah, that's right. There is an AI upscaling feature in this. Now, at the moment, they've mostly been showing it for video, although they did give a small tease for games as well. They haven't revealed many details. Well, by many details, I mean any real details as to how this works. However, Anton um, Kaplanian has stated, in case you were curious, Intel Arc GPUs will come with full DirectX 12 ultimate support, including mesh shaders and high performance ray tracing. Bonus! High quality neural super sampling deserves a separate announcement. So clearly what they're doing here is not some, eh, that's nice, it's a bonus feature, but it's not really a big deal. This sounds like is a very impressive thing indeed. And I really wanna see how it compares, not only in quality and speed, but also implementation to DLSS. How easy, of, how easy is it, excuse me, for developers to implement this and to use it? And what type of toggles do we get as a user? I have to say that while I do really love FSR, and I'm currently doing a lot of kind of stuff on that in the background, although I can't say too much about it, unfortunately, at the moment, because well, I just can't. But um, yeah, DLSS to me is still a major reason to own an NVIDIA product. Because the thing is, you can still run FSR, of course, on an NVIDIA GPU. And I know that that might be, you know, kind of upsetting to some AMD fans, but that's just kind of how I see it, right? Like, if I have the choice between DLSS and FSR in the title, I will generally choose DLSS. 
but some games just don't support FSR, so with NVIDIA still kind of getting the best of both worlds, although I still feel that FSR is a huge, huge gift to the gaming community from AMD, and I'm ultra excited to see what they're going to do in the future. I think FSR is really cool. And I would love to see what Intel will be doing here because another very telling thing that we saw from Intel is upsampling ultra low resolution video. I think it was like, don't quote me on this, but I think it was 480p. Um, you know, when you guys are kind of seeing the edited video, you'll you'll see the resolution. And if I was wrong, you can say, ha ha, Paul was wrong down below. But yeah, basically upsampling it. And that to me is a kind of a good indicator of that, you know, they have been working on this stuff for a while. And it also, it does remind me a little bit of like quite a long time ago that we were kind of, uh, we were kind of hearing that um, Intel's GPUs had really started more in the idea of servers. In fact, when Raja Kadori was kind of f first brought on board, what Intel had really planned originally were GPU accelerators for, well, video. But obviously Raja has decided to expand this project immensely. And clearly he's gotten the support of many at Intel, including most importantly recently, Pat Gelsinger. And the reason this is so important is because Raja himself has kind of seen some type of promotion. He's basically now, you know, the ultra head honcho over at Intel Graphics, which means he also needs to think about things like profit and loss. And yeah, there's a lot of other things that are on Raja's mind at the moment. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this affects their plans going forward. Anyway, so ultimately then, Intel will be releasing these architectures early next year and they've stated that it's both for laptop as well as desktop now with the images we've seen it's quite difficult to tell which which version is which like is the larger one for example the 512 execution units and then will this be cut down to let's say 384 and 256 and is the smaller one we're seeing 128 or is it 256 we can start looking but it's very difficult to really get a comparison point. And there's also other obvious questions we've got, like is there any differences in feature set, for example, between the lower end SKU that's called the 128 and the 256 or 512 versions? Yes, we know, for example, that they've got wider memory interfaces. And we have been hearing, obviously, a, lo a lot of leaks that the top end SKU has 512 execution units, but it is always possible that some of that information is inaccurate. Now, what's really curious to me is that Intel are referring to these as SOCs, system on chips, rather than, you know, SOC and GPU or whatever else. Now, for the mobile side of things, laptops, that makes perfect sense, right? Like, you would plonk a CPU on there, you would plonk a GPU on there, and you would say, good to go. With desktop, it makes me wonder. So, an obvious thing is that with DDR5 coming up, you could certainly have a reasonably performant um, APU. I'm just going to refer to it as an APU. And that could be fed off of the memory, um, DDR5 memory. But what I want to know is, are we going to get separate um, discrete parts? Now, I've reached out to a couple of people, and they've basically told me that we're not going to reveal this information yet, officially. Now, I've reached out to a couple of other people, and here's what I've been told. I don't want you to take this as this is confirmed because, yeah, a lot of this does seem to still be very tight-lipped. But basically, I released a video a while ago. I honestly don't remember how long ago, around a month maybe ago. And I said something in the title like the leaks were wrong uh, about Intel's plans for the GPU. The too long didn't read of that video. I'll link it below is that I was told that Intel want to focus on mobile first, and it seems that this is still the case with what their plans are now. They will release desktop parts, but it seems that the focus initially is going to be in mobile. And there are several reasons for this. The most obvious one that I'm sure most of you are screaming at is that they control the entire ecosystem, right? So you can have an I plus I Intel CPU, Intel GPU, 
And you've got a ton of potential there to nudge that to um, laptop manufacturers like Dell or um, Lenovo or whomever. And yeah, it helps to squeeze NVIDIA out of things. Now, the thing is, AMD have already started to do this. And obviously, Intel uh, have been noticing that, you know, AMD's plans here, and clearly, it doesn't take a particular genius to realize that while you can certainly have a Ryzen and RTX combo, and obviously, I recently took a look at one of those uh, laptops from Acer on uh, Nitro 5, I'll link it in the video description, there is a lot of incentive for AMD and Intel to create a solution which obviously has both of their products in it for obvious reasons. You just get way higher margins. Now, I don't know what the percent of mobile sales are from NVIDIA for their RTX 30 lineup. It's very difficult to know, especially at the moment with mining situations and, you know, <laughs> little world event that's been going on. Um, and obviously that has definitely changed sales figures quite considerably. However, you know, tentatively, I've heard, you know, 30 to 40% mobile sales. Again, it's very difficult to know, so those figures could be way off. Now, imagine the bottom line impact on NVIDIA's financials if um, Intel and AMD could take a number of those products or those sales away by offering an I plus I or an A plus A configuration. And RDNA 2 is really performance, you know, like... It's extremely energy efficient. And we're hearing a lot of rumors, of course, of RTX um, refreshes and maybe even an RDNA refresh. I'm uh, probably gonna cover that tomorrow. I actually have an exclusive about that, but I was gonna cover it today, but this is just, you know, so big of news. I just wanted to kind of go over it. So that's what I'm hearing, guys, that Intel still plans to focus on this first. They want to focus on mobile, and they also know that it's a harder thing to get into, you know, desktop, you know, a discrete product, because there is an awful lot of expectation, not only in terms of feature set and drivers, but also things like, you know, the cooling of it. What are they going to do in terms of working with OEMs? I'd heard, for example, originally that they had been intending to work with OEMs. And then more recently, it was like, no, they're probably just going to manufacture everything themselves, at least initially, and then maybe later on. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting to me. So in terms of performance, I've been hearing it was around 3060 Ti level if you compare it to desktop. And, you know, previously I'd been hearing it was more like RTX 3080. Now, my theory of that, as I've mentioned in a previous video, is that the 3080 is probably 3080 mobile, and therefore the 3060 Ti is probably more like the desktop implementation. Either way, I honestly don't know. And we're not dealing with final silicon here anyway, so who knows what final drivers and last minute optimizations in terms of clock frequency and whatever else they're going to bring to the table. I will say that the things that are most interesting me at the moment is the fact that ray tracing they are stating is high performance. And I mean, yes, they could be being very loose with the truth here. But you have to say that if they're saying it's high performance, it has to be at least as good as AMD's solution, possibly more. And the second thing is that the um, the upsampling tech here could be a really good rival to NVIDIA's. I'm going to be very interested to see how all of this comes on, to be honest. I, I, I'm really genuinely wanting a third player in the market. And obviously, we all know... <laughs> you know, that the 3DFX troll account wasn't real. I mean, I know, there were some sites that were reporting it rather seriously, and I, I assume they were doing it for clicks. I, I'm really hoping they were doing it for clicks, and they didn't genuinely believe that, because, you know, it's like the R&D costs of a new architecture. You can't, you can't pay this with, like, the change you find in the back of a couch. Even Bill Gates couldn't pay this with the change he finds in the back of his couch. Like, th this is a lot of money. And yeah, it's like, really and truly, you need a company like Intel that have incredibly deep pockets, because not only is it the architecture itself, as we've discussed so many times now, but it's things like the drivers, the support of the actual, you know, there's a new game that's come out, oh crap, it's missing a texture because X. Okay, we need to release a new driver update. 
or just even little things like performance optimizations. You know, AMD just recently uh, reduced power consumption for RDNA 2 when you're viewing videos and stuff. And these are important things that, of course, you get from a company. And AMD obviously have been hurt quite heavily in financials up until recently. So, you know, now we're starting to see the company that uh, is AMD really, you know, stretch its, its legs out because now, you know, it can hire more people, it can hire more software and hardware engineers. And this is the thing about Intel, they've got the funds and I believe they've got the technical expertise to do it. Ultimately, I genuinely love NVIDIA, AMD and Intel as a company, uh, as companies, excuse me. And I want, you know, great products because I just think that that's best. Oh, and in case anyone's wondering about the hoodie I'm wearing, I just want to disclose that Intel have sent me this for, you know, just kind of the whole Odyssey thing that went on uh, back when, you know, we could fly and stuff. I was taken to San Francisco and I attended the Odyssey event. So, you know, I've been sent this hoodie and a t-shirt and a couple other little bits and it's, I'm not being paid for this. I just felt that I'm covering Intel. It just made sense to wear the hoodie. Plus, it's a nice hoodie. Yeah, let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. I'm genuinely curious to hear what your thoughts are. And also, down below, what are your hopes for this? And I don't just mean in terms of performance targets and the obvious thing about availability, because otherwise the comments are just going to be availability, please, which obviously is really important. But, you know, if an Intel employee does read this, what do you actually want from Intel? Let them know. Be very vocal to them on Twitter. Say, you know... You want availability, because obviously, but you also want X, whether that's, you know, um, ways of improving older games, whether that's something specific in terms of like custom resolution or scaling or whether it's, I don't know, it makes you coffee in the morning. Let them know, whatever it is. With that said, thanks very much. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.